Haven't seen you for a long time. How is your paper selling? Fifteen, twenty thousand. I heard it was a lot more than that. Well, I haven't checked for the past few weeks. How would you like to be Consul General in San Francisco? I don't have enough money for that. Money's no problem. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll discuss it with my family. Good. You know, I like to help old friends. Tell me, have you heard anything about an article that's being published by some American paper? Yes, I have, Mr. President. I wouldn't run that story locally. I'm going to sue the hell out of anybody who does. If we get it on the wire service, I'll call you. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. appears to be running strongly in favor of Cory Aquino. Election crowds chanting her name continue to grow in massive numbers while Marcos crowds dwindle. The fake war medal story is the latest body blow to the Marcos campaign. Many observers here agree a fair election would result in the unthinkable. Cory Aquino toppling Marcos. But a leader of a Filipino watchdog group says there is only a 50-50 chance of a fair election. The Aquino campaign has asked poll watchers never to let ballot boxes out of their sight. Marcos has called in the army to, in his words, safeguard the election process. In Washington, President Reagan has called for a fair election. Senator Richard Lugar and a team of U.S. observers have arrived here to monitor the election process. But Filipinos are frightened. Villagers know the gunmen and the army will be around long after the observers are gone. And so, as Cory Aquino approaches her last campaign rally, the question appears to be not whether she can win, but whether a fair election process will allow her to win. Ferdinand Marcos is fighting for his political life. His opponent, political neophyte Corazon Aquino, has turned the race into a crusade. But still, Marcos holds most of the cards. This is Radio Veritas. We have another request for volunteers to go to the polling place at Guadalupe School on Yabot Street in Makati District. The number coordinator there has just called to say a group of rowdies are intimidating the voters and not allowing them into the building. signed up for the electoral roll, but your name isn't on it? That's right. They won't allow me to vote. If you want to be a hero, my friend. Go ahead.
scoring is leading by just about 52% to 48% at this early stage. It is not for me to thank the Filipino people. It is for all of us to welcome ourselves home. Mabuhay ang Pilipino. Please deliver this to Radio Veritas. It's my victory speech. The results won't be out for days. I've won. The trend is clear and irreversible. The people and I have won, and we know it. <laughs> Nothing can take our victory from is us. Is the woman mad? No power can pry from our hands. The freedom. The election count state. won't be finished for the several Marcus days. Spell. It was your job to manage the votes, Fabian. But I did, ma'am. Then why is she saying she has won? Have you organized the votes or haven't you? They are organized, ma'am. Don't worry. When the counting is finished, the president will be ahead by at least a million votes. Hmm. Only a million? I hereby proclaim Ferdinand E. Marcos as the duly elected president. Despite continuing charges of vote count fraud, President Marcos had himself declared re-elected today, and he did it in the National Assembly. Meanwhile, President Reagan's troubleshooter, Philip Habib, arrived in Manila to an almost impossible situation. Both sides have polarized further. The United States increasingly viewed here as a country that props up a dictator, one who, after this election, has little support of the population. Does somebody have to get killed to show Mr. Reagan there's something wrong with the election? Opposition newspaper editor Ben Balamo says that President Reagan's suggestion for Marcos and Corey to join the same team shows Washington's lack of understanding of Philippine <laughs> politics. American foreign policy must look at the Philippines as a basketball game. After the game, no one should be a sore loser. There's only one difference. Over here, they bury the loser. Meanwhile, on Capitol Hill in Washington, some of President Reagan's strongest Republican supporters joined the Democrats in condemning the Marcos election. The, uh, the judgment the Senate came to this morning by a vote of 85 to 9 that the election was fraudulent. And it's time that the President of the United States speak on this issue. Cory Aquino has been elected President of the Philippines, and it's time to call a spade a spade. The time for fence setting is over. We're concerned about the violence there and the uh, possibility of fraud, although uh, it could have been that all of that was occurring on both sides. Fraud on both sides? Now, this is the kind of stuff that makes me proud to be an American. How can you live with yourself, Mike? Like all good Americans living in the Philippines, with my eyes closed. How could your president say such a thing, Mr. Bosworth? Do you think there was cheating on both sides? No, I don't, Mrs. Aquino. You see, our evidence has been that the cheating was overwhelmingly on the government side. Well, have you told Mr. Reagan this? Yes, and so have a lot of other people. According to today's news reports from Washington, little seems to have changed. President Reagan says he's ready to hear all the evidence of election fraud in the Philippines, but hints that strategic interests will be more important in determining the future of U.S.-Filipino relations. Sometimes policy moves slowly, Mrs. Aquino. For a long time, the White House thought of Marcus as a friend, and it naturally takes some of them a little while to come to terms with the new reality. But the murders continue, Mr. Ambassador. I won this election. Even with Marcos's cheating, I won over 60% of the votes. I am the rightful president of the Philippines, and the people will take to the streets before they allow Mr. Marcos to resume his rule. Will you tell your president that? I will. Huh? Whiskey and soda, please.